Namaste. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Goko Kanyogu de Mabuza, Shengu Shabalada, from Lopana, from Alama Fusodo, Kwaja Beta Mundu, and Waki Watsemba in Ghana. In this first video that I'm going to be uploading, I'm going to be taking us from Ekalin, where we begin. As African people, do it in the day to do pila, which means in our indigenous knowledge and ways of living, we've always understood that spirit is part and parcel of everything that we do. So it means that it becomes central to our understanding that how do we invite spirit? Spirit being understood as the divine, the creator, the gods, the goddesses. Spirit being understood also as the mystical beings and the energies that exist in other dimensions. Spirit also being understood as our ancestors who have walked to this plane in the physical and have now transcended into the spiritual world and act as intercessors and inter intermediaries. So when we say we connect to spirits, we connect on a multi-dimensional level. So how is it that we would go about connecting? This is my personal journey into how I understand where this connection begins and for today's series we would start and we begin to speak about the water. <laughs> I'll be uploading a series of four videos and in this series we'll be focusing on rituals of connection using the elemental forces of creation. So when I speak about rituals of connection, I'm speaking around how it is that in our everyday lives, wherever we are, we can connect to spirit. Spirit being firstly ourselves, because we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Spirit being our ancestors that connect us to our lineage, connect us to those we are close to, connect us to all of our blood allies that we've shared through the generations, going right back to the original Earth Mother was our first primordial ancestor, connecting then also to spirit in terms of you know, the mythical creatures and beings which are meant to guide us from this dimension and from other dimensions. And ultimately also, how do you connect to the divine, to creator, the primordial waters, God, the goddesses? Because in that connection and establishing that, we are able to then find alignment within ourselves where we are able to then unlock our soul purpose and our soul intent in this world. And that is able to guide us in terms of understanding where it is that we should be going. It's also then able to help us to not struggle so much with this lived experience because we understand then that when certain things happen in our lives, it is not necessarily an act of randomness, but that it is actually something that serves a higher purpose and there is a reason behind it. And it also teaches us also to be more active in how we use our free will because our spiritual connection also is around how especially we can use our free will to vibrate at a higher level to where we live in truth and in purpose and in alignment. And when we then speak of the elemental forces of creation, we're basically speaking about water, earth, air, and fire. Those four elemental forces of creation are basically charged with making sure that life on this world of ours continues. And today, in today's video, we'll start with what could arguably be one of my favorites, which is water. What is the importance of water in our rituals of connection? What does water symbolize? I believe that before we go, even beyond it being a tool of Wuzi Spatlangayo, we pray or we offer it as a libation to our ancestors, which many of us may already know. But water to begin with is our first home where we're born from. We are all come from 
a mother who carried us in her womb. Our first home was that water, and within that we negotiated that which would be our sole contract, our sole purpose in those primordial waters in our mother's wombs. When we that water breaks, that's a signifier that we are now going to come to this earth. When we understand that water is home to us and we understand that also water is charged in facilitating the existence and the growth and the cleansing, the purification of any and everything in this world of ours has a certain kind of a relationship or a reliance upon water. We then understand that water is the primordial, primordial source of life. It is basically la imbilo ikala kona where our life began, it begins in the water. So when you look at a simple glass like this with water that I'm carrying, you need to understand that this water carries all of our histories from the beginning of time and even before when we knew time existed. When we look at this water, we understand that water is a living organism. So we should see if water is a living organism, it is alive. And it being alive means it carries a consciousness. So when you speak to the water, it hears you and it carries all of that. So which is why when we start often in our rituals of connection to our ancestors, it always begins with cleansing, going down to the water to go and speak to our ancestors because we also believe in our Bungoma belief system that our ancestors and is the primeval waters, the source where, where our ancestors live in those waters. So when we see water, we do not see just another inanimate being. We see our primordial ancestor. We see our life force inside water. So it's important that when we speak to the water, when we look at water and we use it as a ritual of connection, whether it's a simple thing such as every day when you wake up and you're taking a shower, setting an intention over that water to call upon the energies that water naturally vibrates, which is that of purification, that of cleansing, that of transformation, because water is also a shapeshifter. So that simple act and ritual of showering and getting ready for the day, when you then connect it with setting an intention and sitting and meditating in that intention, it becomes a ritual of connection. When you go and you are going to work, perhaps in your office, having a bowl of water there and keeping that water there as something that from time to time you meditate on and you call upon it to purify you so that your thoughts can be clear and, be clear and you can have a clarity similar to that water that is calling upon the spiritual energies that exist in the water that can then start to serve you. In this way, you could go about and use water in simple common ways to be able to then connect to the divine energy and the creational force that is there. When we then go to using water in terms of to connect Msamo or in your ancestral altars, we use water also as libation because as we all know, every living organism become, needs to be hydrated. So sharing a glass of water for your ancestors before you start a conversation, you know, purifying your hands by washing your hands and washing your face and washing your feet. Just that thought and that intention behind using the water to constantly purify and to set an intention of clarity and of purification and of cleanliness also, because when we connect to spirit, we want the connection to be pure. We want the connection to be clear. We also want the connection to be clean in terms of it coming to declutter and not coming to overwhelm us. In this way, when we start to look at water as, um, as an ally, as something we can constantly call upon in any creative way into our spaces, we are able to then understand that we and ourselves are also two two parts of our thirds are made up of water. We are mainly water. And within that, when we start to then look at the water and it shows us a reflection, it shows us not just a physical reflection of ourselves, but a reflection also of the spirits that we carry within ourselves. So it is something that I would say is 
very important when we're speaking around the water that also your relationship with how you then use water in your space it's important to drink water and when you're drinking the water it's not just i'm drinking because i'm thirsty but understanding that i am taking a life force in to this water and this can be supported by so many ways where you could start to perhaps teach yourself to be more conscientious of that by perhaps sun charging your water and sun charging your water would be maybe putting it out in the sun and allowing it to charge in the water during full moon also putting out your water to then charge over the moon and that is moon water and tasting the differences in there and infusing it also with the creational um forces which are which also are connected to the water because the sun and the moon are also integral to the, the, the life process of water in terms of how water tra um, transforms this is just you know a beginning and I'll be trying to post a bit more content around how it is that we connect in the next video I will be speaking around what would be understood then as the creational um, force that is air and the importance then of air these will be really short videos and it's just to test out also how it is that everyone is looking to receive. So please just comment and um, send through questions in terms of what we've spoken about. Don't forget to subscribe, like and do all of the all of the sorts.